What's up beautiful people? Uh, today I want to show you my electronic workbench. I want to show you the tools I use when I repair, modify uh, electric guitars. So um, I changed some pickups lately in one of my friend's guitars and uh, I want to show you which tools are necessary or useful. So one important thing I want to start with is a good lamp, a good lighting solution. This lamp has a built-in lens so you can see that uh, it magnifies all the things. It's a LED a lamp so if you I can show you the ring or oh, it's quite bright. I, does it adjust? Uh, yep. So it's very bright. That's especially good if you're dealing with fine structures if you have to do some fine soldiering as well. <clears throat> okay, the next, or one of the most important tools is a good soldering iron. So this one is a Heco. It's, um, I don't, I'm not quite sure, it's a Japanese brand. It looks a bit like a toy because of the color combination, but um, actually it is a very sturdy, very well-built um, solution. So this isn't um, plastic, it's, um, it's uh, built from metal. This is a very, very um, good soldering iron. It is very light, so it's already almost like a pencil. Um, the, the wire is, um, what, what, what do you call it? It's a silicon, it's, um, it's um, durable to temperature so it's, it's, and it's uh, flexible. So it won't get in the way and this uh, station is very sturdy as well so it's a built-in um, power supply so it's a digital station um, I change the focus so you can see it better so it's called Hacko and you just have <coughs> two buttons and uh, you're all set um, another interesting tool is a digital voltmeter. It's a true RMS multimeter from Fluke. It's the 87.5. Um, so this is very uh, sturdy. This is uh, a very professional meter. You don't have to own one of those. But if you invest in good tools, I would suggest that you don't buy the cheap stuff because um, yeah, you will get angry at some time later on. <laughs> and um, there is in Germany, less a saying, if you buy cheap, you buy twice. So this one is an anti-static um, desoldering pump. If you uh, want to remove soldering tin from any components, it's um, very easy and comfortable. So you just, um, so you have to prepare it. It's like pushing it down and then place it over the component put in the soldering iron and when it's uh, in a fluid state you can just release the pump and then it gets sucked away. Um, the same purpose is fulfilled by those little um, suckers here. This is called desoldering, mm, I'm not quite sure, it's a kind of wire. So this is a very, very, um, can you that focus? Yeah, so this is a wire which you place over the, the soldering tin and you can de uh, desolder um, the stuff as well. Um, <clears throat> if you're dealing with PCBs you want to solder your own overdrive or pedal for example then it's good to have a PCB holder. This is a professional one. You get cheap ones around five bucks but uh, this one is I think about 30 bucks. But the um, um, important thing is that this is built from metal. It's heavy, it doesn't tilt. If it's uh, a big PCB, it's quite useful as well. So then you should definitely own some tweezers. Those are tweezers um, which uh, do not corrode. You can uh, see what is anti-acid as well. Oh, it's, I don't know, I'm not dealing with acid, but I think they are good quality steel, Swiss made, you can see here, good quality steel and precision pre, uh, tweezers, so it's a 
easy to pick up some components. Okay, next um, you need some good wire cutters. So for the big wires, please use sturdy one. And for the small wires, use an electronic side wire cutter. So it's um, that uh, the diameter should not exceed 1.6 millimeters of copper wire here. And uh, trust me, guys, I ruined one of those in my early days when I was new in my uh, in a company, and they are about uh, 50 bucks, and I ruined one of those by cutting. Uh, big wires uh, with one of those and um, the dude got <laughs> very angry for destroying a 50 buck plier. Um, then you have some some pliers which can um, yeah they're a little curved it's it's good if you have um, components and you want to hold them and they can really get get they can get really hot when you attach the soldering iron so it's good to have some pliers for adjustment where the tweezers uh, don't work anymore. Um, good all-round uh, plier, uh, good all-rounder on pliers is um, this kind. You know, see I ruined the, this already a bit, but um, nevertheless it's good quality. Um, it fulfills multi-purpose. It's a multi-purpose plier, uh, so don't, don't buy a cheap one. You will uh, get angry after a short period of time. So, one of the most, most important tools when dealing with wires and, and if you are into soldering, those are strippers. I've got two of them. It's always good to have some strippers at home. Um, a big stripper and a small stripper. So it's uh, for the big wires, uh, for the bigger wire diameters. And um, this is for the smaller components. So, can I focus? That, uh, there is some uh, wire gorge printed on. And the same goes here. This is just supposed to work on at max one millimeter diameter on, I think, uh, insulated copper wire. So here we go. Next thing is it's the fume extractor. So if you're soldering at home, um, it's a good idea to own one of those as well because it will extract the fume which comes from the uh, soldering tin or which yeah which is uh, set free when you're soldering with tin sorry and um, yeah so it's that your lungs uh, stay healthy so it's quite important to get rid of the smoke from your solder okay well next tool is a cordless screwdriver this is from bosch it's called the xo this is very old i um, already replaced um, the switch on this one a couple of years ago and now it works again like a charm so you can uh, see it reverse and this is forward you can charge it here it's not those uh, one of those crappy micro usb that's a it's a better connector here because it's the older one the usb wasn't that common around that time so you should definitely own a lot of screwdrivers. This is a very small one for Phillips screws. Can get handy when uh, removing pickup covers or um, the back plates from your guitar. It's very useful. Actually, I found this one on the street uh, during a walk a couple of years ago. It was laying around the street and I said, well, mm, good, someone lost it. Um, find those keepers. So here we go. Um, then some screwdrivers with a flat head. So for bigger screws and for smaller screws, those a very small one here. Yep, got it into focus as well. Yep, this is a very smaller one. Try to focus it. Yep, here we go. So a lot of screwdrivers. All right, uh, this is a um, very functional multi-purpose screwdriver. It's uh, Swiss made from Swiss tools. It wasn't uh, really cheap, but it was worth the money. It has a little compartment here inside the grip. And there you can see there are some Torx, some Allen, some Phillips and some slotted screw 
bits so it's quite useful that you have all in one place all right um then next little mystery box is this one and this is quite useful when you're dealing with a whole lot of electronic um, components or um, with electronics in general there are sometimes screws which uh, don't fit the normal allen or um, phillips slotted screw so those those are uh, tri wings and torque uh, temper resistant torques temper resistant and um, you can see they look like phillips but they actually aren't phillips screws so it um, comes quite handy when you have to open a special enclosement where you don't have normally wouldn't have the screws uh, the, the bits for the screwdriver yep <clears throat> all right then the uh, next uh, tool i own is this um, these nice little calipers it's a digital caliper from weha this is one of, one of my favorite brands it is um swiss precision precision as well so yeah buy the swiss tools they're really good they can do tools and watches um, and this is an electronic caliper and then you can just operate begins to operate when you when you pull it back and it goes to uh, one hundredth of a millimeter you don't need that precision that much but um, sometimes it's it's good to have one very precise you can zero it out here so it's it's very nice it, and it's light as well i think it's made uh, from a plastic compound but nevertheless it's a uh, really good quality here when you're dealing with electronics in general it's always good to have a power supply unit so and this one is um digital regulated power supply it goes from 0 to 30 volts and from 0 to 5 amps so it's a switching mode power supply um, I think for a little electronic workbench this one is sufficient um, it's not too expensive and it um, comes quite handy when you have uh, some gear which is um, you know, powered by a battery and you can just connect the power supply adjusted to 9 volts or whatever you need and then you can test the equipment without having an actual battery connected that's quite nice to own so I switch it off okay so another tool you can own but you don't have to own um, is an oscilloscope a digital one so this is a Rigo. It has a built-in si signal generator. It's a four-channel. I think for most uh, home project, home workbenches, it's uh, over the top, but uh, they aren't expensive anymore. So um, to own one of those, if you dig deeper into electronics, it's an, it's a nice option to have. I haven't I shown you yet um, for more delicate uh, repairs uh, like okay say you want to repair a, a phone change a battery on one of your smartphones you need very 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 fine torx screwdrivers so this is a torx was it called uh, it's stand on it's on the back it's a t4 so that's a very very fine and uh, you can repair is it even smaller that's a T5, okay, I see, T5, yeah, that's bigger, so I think T4 is the smallest one, and it's good to uh, open up smartphone case, yeah, smartphones and um, some delicate electronics. Um, it's highly recommended that you own a couple of um, quality ones, because um, when you try to open it with cheap ones, you could easily ruin the screws, because they're so small that they... You have to use some precision tools to get um, them out and back in in a nice way so 
All right, so one of the last tools I recommend to have if you dig deeper into electronics, if you make your own electronics, it's like a, um, it's a tool where you can um, bend resistors. So it's like you put the resistor over here and then you bend it down and then you get the, the right pitch um, between the um, connectors so that you can easily fit it into your electronic circuit. All right, and those are just a couple of bucks. Well, it's not expensive and when I was young, I should have bought one of those because I've always struggled with <laughs> bending resistors <laughs> into the correct shape and, and this is so, so cheap but so useful. If you're serious about getting into electronics, I rec highly recommend you to buy one of those. Okay. Yeah, so I think I gave you a quick overview about uh, over the most important tools I own. So uh, at last some some uh, really uh, WD40. It's um, yeah it's nice to own to get uh, parts. What, what does it say? If, if it should move but doesn't move, then you use uh, WD40. And if it moves but shouldn't move, you have to use some gaffer tape. So um, this was a small overview, little overview of my electronic workbench. And um, if, feel free to ask me some questions in the comments. And if you like the content, then please hit the subscribe button as well. Stay safe. So this was another video from Precisimo Guitar. If you like the content, please hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more.